when I hear people argue against climate science, they talk about like how much the climate has changed throughout the Earth's history, which, yeah, it has, but humans used to not exist. And the Earth has had five mass extinctions and 99.9% .9 of all species that have existed on Earth are now extinct. So yeah, climate has fluctuated throughout history, but so is the entire ecology of the Earth, which means life dies off. Or people talk about things like how cold it was in New York over the weekend, and they think that somehow basic physics and chemistry and the greenhouse effect should be ignored because it's cold where they are at that moment. Since the Industrial Revolution, the Earth has warmed about one degree Celsius, which to most people, that probably doesn't sound like it matters, but the average global temperature dropping five degrees Celsius could put New York under 2,600 feet of ice. And the average global temperature going up six degrees Celsius could put New York under 400 feet of water. So small changes in climate make a huge difference. I'm from Southeast Texas, which is an area that's dependent on the oil and gas industry. It's also an area that gets hit by hurricanes pretty often. So in this series, I've merged elements of the oil industry with flood water of a couple of hurricanes that were exacerbated by the oil industry. So there are photographs that combine a cause and effect. Uh, and this series isn't meant this series isn't meant to point the finger at people for working in the oil industry or driving cars or using fossil fuels at all. Um, I work in the oil industry and I drive a car. I'm actually unemployed right now, but I work as a pipe welder when I am working. Um, I do think it's unethical, but people need to survive and there's really not an ethical way to participate within capitalism. The American Petroleum Institute reports that there are around two and a half million direct impact jobs in the oil and gas industry. And they say that that number is projected to reach 3.9 million by 2025. The Green New Deal would create 20 million jobs. So 18 million new jobs would be created by switching from fossil fuel energy to renewable energy. Because in order to switch over, the entire infrastructure of energy production, as well as the way we consume energy in America, would have to be changed. <clears throat> um, I can empathize with people that live in my area that work in oil and gas and worry that their jobs and their livelihoods are at risk. I understand that change can be scary, and I can understand when people that are making between $20 and $50 an hour don't want that to change. But 20 million available jobs is way more than three and a half million. And the Green New Deal lays out how communities and workers that depend on the fossil fuel industry would transition into renewable energy. Our world is dominated by corporations though, and growth has to happen for our economic system to be stable. So the exploitation of labor and resources is necessary for those institutions to survive. And they do a good job of convincing people that it's either not a problem or the damage that is done is worth it. Corporations also own mainstream media and have huge influence on governments. So it's easy for them to control the narrative. And things that we should be talking about as things that we should be talking about as a society aren't talked about because they either don't get good ratings or they don't contribute to the accumulation of wealth for people in power. The threat of rising sea levels not allowing our current coastal cities to exist anymore or not being able to grow crops, things like this that would be devastating to people's lives just aren't talked about that much because short-term profit is more of a priority. As Americans, we've watched climate migrants come up from Central America because they were having heat waves and drought that was so bad that they couldn't grow food and it was getting too hot to live. People were coming here to try to survive and they were met with hatred and they weren't allowed to seek asylum. And we saw huge parts of the population panic because Americans are haunted by this false sense of scarcity. We are told that we don't have enough and that they're going to take away what we do have. 
these people are just trying to stay alive. They had to abandon their homes because heat waves were keeping them from being able to grow food. But that isn't what's talked about. All we're told is that we're in danger and that they're going to cause problems in our lives. It's weird how well fear-mongering works in certain situations when there are all kinds of real underlying problems that are ignored on purpose and very successfully ignored. If this country actually functioned as a wealthy nation, most of the horrifying stuff that poor people in this country have to deal with wouldn't exist or would at least be handled much differently. And as far as the climate crisis specifically, without oil lobbies and billionaires and multi-billion dollar corporations calling the shots, I think that as a nation, we would just make decisions based on the well-being of society. People could live happier knowing that their kids and grandkids and generations beyond that wouldn't have to worry about climate extinction. But short-term profit is too important to our society. The people in power are comfortable with the way things are and the well-being of society just doesn't matter enough to them. President-elect Joe Biden is supposed to have the most progressive climate plan of any president, but the Obama administration opened the Arctic to drilling twice, allowed the Dakota Access Pipeline to be planned and built, the Keystone Pipeline to be built and operated, expanded fracking, and throughout his presidency, oil and gas production in America was significantly increased. And President Trump says climate change is a hoax. So, it seems pretty easy for a Biden administration to be the most progressive without actually making substantial change. Like, we'll probably, we'll probably only get minor restrictions and some incorporation of renewable energy, which, as we've seen, half measures can be really problematic because they don't actually help and they get pushed back against really hard. When working class people get upset about these things, it's because they lose work or they are affected financially, or there's at least a looming fear of those things happening. If the Green New Deal were passed and there were 18 million new jobs in just the energy sector, who would complain about that? Uh, some oil executives who are already millionaires anyway? But when there are only tiny changes made and those changes seem like political theater more than actual policy, then it hurts working class people and they become averse to change. As far as the climate crisis goes, I think that we might have to wait for either science to come to the rescue or for ecological devastation to have so much of an effect on people that it becomes impossible to not acknowledge the climate crisis because we will be struggling to survive and deep, deep structural change would become a necessity. In the U.S., we had a couple of months to prepare for COVID-19, and we responded badly enough that 250,000 people have died this year from a virus that other countries have proven you don't have to die from. COVID was one of the leading causes of death this year, only behind heart disease and cancer, and it seems like a lot of people still don't even care about it. Like, it looks like a lot of people think that it's their right to possibly catch and spread a virus that can be fatal, like freedom to them means not caring about a health crisis. So witnessing the way the pandemic has been handled, I can't imagine people really responding to the climate crisis and we, until we have truly devastating changes, which I would consider the coronavirus pandemic to be devastating, but with how mixed the response has been, the climate situ situation, I guess, will have to be even more dire. I had taken different pictures of flare stacks at refineries with my digital camera and was just holding onto those with no plans of what I was going to do with them. There are quite a few refineries around here and they sometimes use the flare stacks to burn off gas. So that could be for safety reasons, like if product needs to be cleared out of the unit to prevent an accident, it could be sent out to a flare stack and burned off into the atmosphere. Uh, it could be because the chemical mixture just isn't right, so the product isn't valuable. Like, when a unit is meant to make a specific product and something's off in the unit, say the unit is making gasoline and it ends up with too much benzene for it to be sold. So it might be more cost effective for the refinery to just burn it off into the atmosphere. So I would sometimes take pictures of flares burning 
knowing I wanted to use them for something eventually. Then Hurricane Harvey hit, so I went to Port Arthur and collected a couple gallons of flood water once I was able to, able to drive back to the area. And the same thing happened where I knew I wanted to use the flood water for something, but hadn't figured out how yet. <clears throat> then I eventually started figuring out what I wanted to do with the series, and I started working on these pictures at first. Uh, in this one, I froze some, some of the flood water into a block of ice, and I projected the digital picture of this flare stack on the block of ice and took a picture of that with a 4x5 rail camera. Uh, in this one, I sprayed a mist of the flood water on glass and projected these burning flare pictures uh, onto the water droplets. So the way I made these first few bluish ones with the flare stacks was by projecting the digital images either on or through the flood water in different ways. So just combining imagery of the oil industry with the natural disasters that are made worse by the oil industry. Uh, with these black and white pictures, Hurricane Ike flooded my parents' house and I had a bunch of negatives and prints stored uh, in a suitcase in their dining room. And whenever we were cleaning out the house that got flooded, I kept a couple of strips of negatives and I threw out all the other negatives and prints, but when I started making this series, I knew I wanted to incorporate these damaged negatives into the series. Um, so these were just pictures I took as a student and the flood water soaked the emulsion and just destroyed it. And then I ended up with these abstract pictures. Um, to make the flame pictures, I burned oil, gas, and diesel. The oil was from my car. I just drained some oil when I needed an oil change and burned that for these pictures. And then uh, after I developed the film, I soaked the negatives in the Hurricane Harvey flood water, which I wanted to do because the black and white ones were flooded in Hurricane Ike, and I wanted to mess up the emulsion in a similar way. So the way I did these was just a controlled version of that. And I'm definitely not, a, I'm definitely not delusional enough to think that I'm going to make some big impact by making pictures like this but I've seen artwork that has changed my perspective on different things in life, and it's helped me grow as a person. The way you can reflect on the meaning of artwork when you're on your own in a gallery space is a lot different than the way people normally process socio-political conversations or events. So what I can do with this series and some of the other work that I'm making at the moment is contribute to the conversations that I think need to be had about these issues and then people can view it on their own terms. And the work I make is kind of targeted towards the old version of me. I remember one time thinking about carbon dating and getting so upset and confused because at the time I was choosing to believe that the earth was 6,000 years old because that's what I learned from the Bible. And I was trying to convince myself that scientists were idiots because I wanted my beliefs to be faith-based instead of science-based. And my inability to comprehend the science behind like radiometric dating led me to just think I was smarter than the entire scientific community, which I didn't even understand I was doing that until looking back on it. And that's just the Dunning-Kruger effect. So where smart and experienced people are aware of what they don't know and dumb and inexperienced people have no idea what they don't know, they think they know it all and so they act accordingly. And I'm not trying to say that I'm smart and experienced now, but as I've learned more and experienced the world more, I've also learned about how much I don't know. So I got to the point where I was able to realize, oh, I'm an idiot and maybe I should listen to the extremely smart people that are studying these things and confirming their studies with the scientific method and making sure their findings withstand academic scrutiny. So. I went from completely overestimating my knowledge and being stupid and confident at the same time to being okay with not knowing stuff and being open to learning. And now I'm making pictures about things that are a problem and need a change because I know that when I see stuff like this, it's helpful to like take, take in this kind of information in a different setting. It does seem weird though to be talking about climate change when 40 million Americans are living in poverty and 45,000 Americans die a year because they don't have access to healthcare. 
and half a million people are homeless and tens of millions of people are facing eviction, uh, a couple million people are incarcerated and the nation works so hard to maintain systemic racism instead of just treating people fairly and we're in a pandemic and wealth inequality is out of control. But switching from fossil fuels to renewable energy and avoiding climate extinction seems like it should be such an easy thing to do. But all those issues I mentioned uh, seem like they would be an easy fix if our society just prioritized humans and human life over prioritizing private enterprise. Anyway, with this series specifically, I just wanted to show people pictures that can be a reminder like, hey, climate change is real, and it's easy to see that the global temperature is increasing, and it doesn't take that much change for us to have a wildly different situation.